Hello and welcome to the crypto channel where I try to bring you the news without the hype. I've been wanting to do this video for a while basically looking at do we think XRP, Bitcoin or Ethereum will race, reign supreme for the future? When I think about the future I think most people are generally investing for the next five to ten years where they really hope that they're going to see real change and real wealth uh, for their family and for their children etc. And us in the crypto space, we're always trying to navigate which crypto we think is going to do the best. In the Bitcoin community, they think Bitcoin will do the best. In the Ethereum community, they think Ethereum will do the best. And in the XRP community, we think uh, XRP will do the best. So this is an XRP dominant kind of channel. So I will be biased towards XRP. But my point of why I created this channel is if I thought Bitcoin was the one, then I would change to Bitcoin and I would change this channel completely to Bitcoin. So if you're heavily involved in Bitcoin and you have a really, really strong argument and you disagree with some of the things that I say, please leave it in the comments. I'm always wanting to be educated. I don't care whether XRP, XRP, Bitcoin or Ethereum do better. I just want to know which one will do better to focus a channel on and to improve my life for my family and for my friends who I talk about crypto. And I'm pretty sure you listening to this video now are in that same boat where if you felt one or truly, truly believed and had a really strong argument of something that I've missed that say Bitcoin was the one or Ethereum was the one, then yeah, please leave it in the comments. I imagine you don't really care which one is the one other than choosing the right one because it's not like a football team where you have to support kind of Liverpool football club for the rest of your life because you're Liverpool we just want the kind of the best technology that will make us the most money that's why we're doing this so here are my kind of arguments for XRP and why I have chosen XRP from over seven years coming up to eight years of research over the years I have seen the uh, kind of communication between ripple the company and banks as well as central banks and you know sitting in a room with kind of 50 central bankers back in the day we recently had a partnership where we are on the uh, the bank of international settlements partnered with ripple so that ripple are now part of their task force when you talk about the bank of international settlements i've seen on mainstream news i've seen guests on the robert kiyosaki show talking about it and i've seen it elsewhere multiple times mark moss is one of the people that speak about it where there's this power structure, it's called the Kissinger kind of power structure, and this is generally accepted by many people, and they always talk about the same power structure, even though they're talking about completely separate things to cryptocurrencies. And with this kind of uh, power structure, they talk about how government is at the bottom rung of the ladder of power. We are obviously all the way down at the very bottom, us little humble people. But above the government, you have the World Economic Forum and the Club of Rome. Above them, you have the central banks, groups like the IMF, ECB, etc. And then at the very top of the pile, you have the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements. BIS is regarded, so Bank of International Settlements, as one of the most, if not the most powerful financial, financial entity on planet Earth. So when you start seeing kind of connections with the Bank of International Settlements and Ripple. I don't see them having representatives of Ethereum and I don't see them having representatives of Bitcoin going and talking about kind of the future of finance and partnering with them. But the uh, BIS has partnered with Ripple, who will be part of their task force. You see people like Christine Lagarde, who are always kind of sitting with the BIS. She was the head of the IMF uh, and then ECB. She's held kind of top positions. And I can't remember what conference it was, but it, the Bank of International Settlements was there and Christine Lagarde literally physically walked in with kind of Brad Garlinghouse on her arm. And all of these type of things, these little breadcrumbs that we're seeing or have seen over the years kind of give you pause for thought and make you think that very, very possibly Ripple and XRP are going to do amazing things in the world. And then you go on to things like the board of directors that Ripple has. Again, no other crypto uh, company I can see has this. You have groups like Ethereum where a lot of the founders seem to be fleeing shit because there's allegations of corruption and fraud and manipulation and the initial coin offerings and the disguised whales and all the kind of things like that. Whereas the Ripple board of directors are proud to be part of Ripple. You have, but it's who's on that team that fascinates me the most. 
You have people like Rosie Rios, the 43rd Treasurer of the United States. She was the CEO of Bureau and Engraving and Printing at the US Mint. She was also part of the Federal Reserve Transition Team. You have Sandy O'Connor, who the American banker described her as one of the most powerful women in banking. I mean, and she's been described by the American banker uh, multiple times. That's kind of interesting. Uh, these are the type of things I pay attention to. She was also the director of Bank of NY Mellon and the chair of the Federal Reserve Board. Again, a powerhouse of a, of a woman who has worked at the very, very top levels. You have Craig Phillips, 2008 to 2017, was the managing director of BlackRock. He's also held senior positions at Morgan Stanley and Credit Suisse. He's described as the pioneer in uh, securitized products industry. I mean, these are kind of things that make me stand up and go, wow, these are really interesting people. You've got Warren Jensen, who is the CFO, so the chief financial officer of Amazon, and he was the CFO of many uh, Fortune 500 companies. You have uh, other people in the directorship, such as Anya Manuel, who is a former diplomat, and she's got legal expertise in front of the US Congress, Department of Justice, and the SEC. All of these people on an individual kind of basis, they don't fail. They're very, very successful people, and their careers have just been the, the right move after the right move that's led them all the way to the very top. And they certainly don't make uh, kind of mistakes en masse. These things are things that stick in my mind as to, wow, that's kind of really, really interesting and amazing. I don't think anyone, any of these big, powerful institutions, I think most of you will agree listening to this, are ever going to give you the roadmap of what the future financial system is going to be. We hear snippets of information and that's what we do on this channel. We try and, <coughs> excuse me, we try and kind of bring the breadcrumbs together and work out what we think they're going to do with it. But they're never going to come out and tell us they will reserve that insider information for themselves. But yeah, just the board of directors, the fact that you have a group of people who are who have held the top positions of the most, like BlackRock, most powerful financial institution on planet Earth. And we have uh, on the board of directors, Craig Phillips, who was their managing director for multiple years. All of these people have direct connections to the very top of the current leaders of Federal Reserve, banks, you name it. These are the things that I look at and interest me. I don't see people like uh, representatives of Bitcoin or Ethereum working with these people and having such people. XRP is the only cryptocurrency with legal clarity at the moment. I often put my tin for hat on and think a lot of what you see is smoke and mirrors and the fact that we are sitting as the only X, uh, cryptocurrency in the United States with legal clarity. Yes, they've come out and said Bitcoin is a commodity, so arguably Bitcoin also has legal clarity. But sitting in front of the House, Congress, Gary Gensler could not uh, say whether or not Ethereum was a security or not. So that kind of puts uh, Ethereum in the crosshairs in my mind. The next point that is of focus to me from over the years is why is XRP the main crypto that is attacked by mainstream media? And if you're a Bitcoin person or a, an Ethereum person, I won't call you a Bitcoin maxi or an Ethereum maxi because I don't feel like I'm an XRP maxi. I just want the best coin. And if another, if I thought Bitcoin was better, I'd immediately change this channel to Bitcoin. But why is it? Does it not seem interesting to you listening to this that XRP is the one cryptocurrency that has been attacked nonstop? You look at the board of directors. These are not just just random people these are really serious professional people that are have are working with creating this company ripple and using xrp so why is xrp the one that's always attacked on mainstream media my conclusion and i think is a fairly logical conclusion would be xrp is the biggest threat to all other cryptos to the financial system to the free dinners of banks etc etc i think that's why it was attacked. That's why the SEC mainly went after Ripple and XRP holders. It seems a logical conclusion. Even now, when we've had we had the false news, false news of the XRP ETF, Squawk Box puts out a piece where they don't even kind of say, "Oh, XRP has now got clarity, so you could invest in this space." All they do is a hit piece on XRP and Ripple, the company and purposely call XRP Ripple, knowing full well that they're two very, very different things. These things kind of make me think, and if you're a Bitcoin holder, an Ethereum holder, 
or a mate sort of your your biggest bag is in those things do these things not make you kind of question maybe just maybe there's something quite interesting and special about xrp uh, let me look at my notes and see if there's any more i have okay so you've got ethereum and you know the cost of playing on in the ethereum ecosystem it's expensive uh, there was a, a lady up on stage just the other day talking about how it's expensive and her company will now move from Ethereum and they will find another project that they can use that will offer cheaper uh, transfers of money because, yep, she said Ethereum was great, but it's just too expensive. When Ethereum and Bitcoin had a free pass and they have had a free pass. And again, I don't think that issue can be debated between Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP kind of maxis. It's just one of those kind of things that is really kind of factual at this point. They've had a free pass with Gary Gensler being the head of the SEC. You've had Bill Henman. You've had Jay Clayton at the SEC. All of them haven't wanted to touch, haven't wanted to touch Bitcoin, haven't wanted to touch Ethereum, loved attacking XRP. Um, so again, these kind of things make me go, well, these are interesting. So when Ethereum had its free pass, yeah, it's done really well. It's done fantastically. And I think it's a brilliant project. But my fear of investing in Ethereum is... I think there are better projects out there and I think XRP is one of those better projects where the technology can do kind of a lot of the things that Ethereum can do better, faster, cheaper. Um, and these are why I don't, I, I haven't invested in Ethereum because these things are of concern to me. And then I think the final point for me is the whole narrative of the world of going green you've got bitcoin which uses a lot of electricity the mining i mean it's just uses huge amounts of supply if you go onto the bank of international Set settlement websites you can see speeches from their top people and one of these speeches was talking about how bitcoin uses the electricity equivalent of the country of austria and with this whole new uh, green deal i mean we just had joe biden coming out saying the biggest ex existential existential threat to humanity is climate, global warming, and how we need to make this a priority for the world. If you're in the Bitcoin community, do you really think that they're going to keep up this kind of, yeah, Bitcoin's fantastic, etc., with the narrative and the agenda of going green? I don't. I think they could change that narrative very, very quickly. And does it not interest you, would be my second point, of how the mainstream kind of have always pushed Bitcoin in front of your face and said, yeah, this is amazing, buy Bitcoin and also buy Ethereum, but don't buy any of the others. They're all, they're all rubbish. Do you have that much faith and that much trust in the mainstream that when they tell you this and they show you Bitcoin, 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 that they've got your best interests at heart and they want you to make money and do well and that's why you should buy Bitcoin? All of these things kind of are the questions that I have constantly going around in my head when I'm doing research of, you know, is XRP the one, is Bitcoin the one, or is Ethereum the one? And too many things don't add up with Bitcoin, such as the energy, the fact, uh, the energy usage, the fact that mainstream is always putting it in your face. I think Bitcoin and Ethereum will do well, but in my mind and my research, I think XRP has a potential to do much, much better and have much better percentage price appreciation than Bitcoin and Ethereum. I kind of fear a little bit for the future of Ethereum with a lot of the, you've got Stephen Nairoff who's coming out with a load of kind of fraud claims against the Ethereum founders and the disguised wells and who are these people and what countries does Ethereum founders have connections to and is it kind of you know, it's supposed to be completely sufficiently decentralized, but is it sufficiently decentralized, etc. Kind of these type of questions concern me. And the mainstream media have just said for years, oh, Ethereum sufficiently decentralized, it's all good. And Bitcoin's the one. So I think I'm going to kind of end the video there. The So yeah, if you really really think bitcoin if you think what i'm talking about is wrong and that i've missed something i've missed a fundamental principle of why bitcoin's the best please leave it in the comments and educate uh, people in the community there was a fantastic interview with sam dodson and a guy called pia roche something and they were talking uh pia was a uh, uh, a hardcore bitcoin person and these two people really understand the technology behind it the blockchains how the blockchain works um two of the cleverest people I've ever heard an interview with talking 
kind of about Bitcoin and XRP. And Pia said, Bitcoin is a fantastic store of value. And he agreed, it is a bit slow. It is a bit shit in those kind of terms of, yeah, it's slow and expensive. But what Bitcoin has is the fact that the technology won't change. Whereas something like XRP, if you have an 80% consensus of a change to happen, and that consensus is held for the validators for a two week period, then changes will happen on the XRPL. And the same goes with Ethereum, whereas Bitcoin is almost impossible to change. So people know the rules of the road and that's why they like Bitcoin, because it's not going to change. You already know the kind of the monetary policy of Bitcoin. And I appreciate that for Bitcoin. I think that's why Bitcoin is a fantastic store of value. And I think it will do I think it will do well. But my fear would be that all of a sudden, en masse, we seem to see governments acting as one nowadays, when all of a sudden, when one pushes out an agenda, they all seem to push out the same agenda, certainly in the West. Uh, and it wouldn't take, you know, it wouldn't take too much for them to change the narrative of Bitcoin bad, Bitcoin uses too much electricity, Bitcoin's destroying the world for that narr narrative to really damage not just Bitcoin, but the whole of crypto, because it would pull all of crypto down. So those are my concerns. And I think Pierre kind of uh, acknowledged those those flaws, but he said the thing about, so he's, he was saying, you know, XRP is fantastic, what, it, what it's doing, and Sam was educating on XRP, and he said Ethereum's fantastic, but they're not Bitcoin. And that was his point with Bitcoin. So he said, yeah, XRP, uh, the XRP ledger does amazing things, but it's not Bitcoin. That's what it doesn't have. It's not Bitcoin because it, it will change with the times, the XRP ledger, whereas Bitcoin really won't. It, you know what the, mon the, kind of the monetary policy is now, and it will most likely be the same in 10 years time, the same monetary policy, whereas the XRP ledger could look drastically different in 10 years time from where it is now. So that's kind of uh, plus points for Bitcoin. But it's just the energy usage and it being used on a huge kind of scale as opposed to just a store of value. And, you know, maybe it does scale and maybe the world goes to shit so much like we're seeing around the world that actually people go, you know what, the only place you can really keep your money is Bitcoin. And then us in the XRP community would go, ah, OK, we chose we kind of chose the wrong horse of the horse, uh, the wrong horse at the races. And it was actually Bitcoin. So, yeah, leave in the comments what you think. I just think that kind of everything I've spoken about with the partnerships we've seen around the world, how Ripple has partnered with so many banks, they've had so many meetings with central banks, they've partnered with the Bank of International Settlements, the board of directors that are the kind of the dream team of board of directors for Ripple. XRP now has legal clarity. Is this just a coincidence or is all part of the game? Depends whether you have your tin for hat on or not. Is this just... Yeah, just a kind of a, a plan that's going to be played out or is it not? And yeah, so I think I'm going to finish the video there. I really, really genuinely would love to hear from people in the Ethereum kind of community and the Bitcoin community, especially those that have kind of a really deep understanding of the kind of cryptography behind these coins. Whether I'm missing something, whether you have fears if you're in the Bitcoin community that the government could actually come out with a narrative of Bitcoin's killing the planet. So we need to stop Bitcoin. I mean, is that one of your do you fear that that could happen? And do you also fear that something like XRP would be used on a huge scale for things like cross border payments and it would just become part of a new financial system because it's so cheap in order and so fast to kind of move money around the world? Do you fear you would then be sitting on Bitcoin and watching XRP have higher, higher price appreciation than Bitcoin? So to summarize, I think Bitcoin will do well. I think people will make money off Bitcoin. I think Ethereum holders will do well and I think Ethereum holders will make money. But I think XRP holders will make more money in terms of percentage gains than Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that's why I do an XRP channel and that's why I kind of invest in XRP for my children's future. I don't care which one wins. I just want to pick the right winner for my family and my children's future. If you have insights as to why it's not XRP and it's something else, then please leave it in the comments. I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you very much for listening. If you like this video, then please uh, hit the like button. It really does help push this video out to other people. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to the channel. And remember, this is just fun. It's not financial advice. We're just kind of having a little think tank debate here 
and I really look forward to seeing any comments from people out there with kind of what your thoughts are and I'll actually leave a final summary I think there's probably uh, some smaller cap cryptos that are going to out compete they're going to be over a 15 uh, 5 10 15 20 year period I think they're going to beat Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. I think you're going to see some that have such high price appreciation that most people didn't kind of predict. But I always think that a serious investor is not going to put too much money in those at this period.